So I know George has another burning question he wants to ask you about billets. Um, you know, we, we kind of hinted at earlier, but you and you were talking about um, as a military domain and obviously the need to protect space and access to space. Does that mean that there are, are combat oriented billets that you're also be recruiting for? Or is that are we just not there yet? What does that look like? Because because we, we view space as a warfighting domain, most operational jobs are considered to be combat oriented. Um, so in our basic doctrine, the Space Capstone publication or the SCP, if we're playing the uh, bingo game, uh, it, it, that, that document outlines the responsibilities of the Space Force in both uh, uh, in space and in support of the joint force and the nation. This is the why we do what, what we do. And then that, that document also says how we do that and what the job types are for space or the who. And so the cool thing is that the, is that the SCP shows the relationships between the why, the how, and the who. And so in, the, in the, this way, a person can see the thread that connects what they're doing on a daily basis to the overarching cornerstone responsibilities of the service, all of which have a warfighting uh, foundation. And so when folks go to airforce.com slash spaceforce, as, as we talked about, or to spaceforce.mil, they'll see a listing of job types that they can apply for. And because we're a lean, agile, and digital service, uh, they, all of these jobs are absolutely critical. We are looking to fill all of them, and they all support warfighting in the domain and the American warfighter. If, if I can, there's something there <clears throat> that made me think about. And you know, we've talked about the technical skills. We've talked about how this is a domain that touches on cyber, right? And obviously everyone's talking about cybersecurity these days if they weren't, they weren't already. Um, what does that mean for folks who don't have technical backgrounds? What do you look for for people who are non-technical? What sort of roles are there for them? Because I really do believe that the future space economy is going to involve a large blue collar workforce. And so tell me what that looks like and if that's also part of the thinking um, over at Space Force. Yes. And so as you mentioned in your personal story, George, how you were in high school and you went to the recruiter, a lot of folks come straight out of high school. And so they won't have a specialized type of education. They won't have a specific technical uh, degree. But if a young person can focus on science, technology, engineering, and math or STEM uh, courses while in high school, that will help prepare them. Uh, but there are no specific course requirements on the enlisted side for entry in, into the Space Force. But in, in my opinion, there are three things that a person can do to make them a good candidate, regardless of if they have a technical background or not. So number one, a young person must score well on the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, or the ASVAB. This is where uh, the academic preparation and taking STEM courses will absolutely come, come into play. Uh, the ASVAB, com combined with some, with some other factors, is kind of like the uh, sorting hat if you will, that can tell a person what jobs they qualify for from an academic perspective. Number two, they have to be physically fit, period. Now, I'm not saying that a person has to be able to do an Ironman, but they should be able to uh, run a few miles, to do push-ups and to do sit-ups. And the best time to prepare for the fitness portion, if you're listening and, and if you're thinking about joining, the best time to, to prepare is right now. If, if you feel you have a long way to go on your fitness, start, start small. Be consistent with good fitness choices. And before you know it, you'll be ready. Um, and then we'll take you the rest of, of the way. And number three, good character. We are lo looking for people who have integrity, who own their mistakes, and who can silently move forward being great. This is how people qualify for military service, and they don't have to have a, a, a technical uh, degree. So, so Samson, I think you're in, except for the whole setup thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been doing my push-ups, right? I've been doing my push-ups. Uh, it's very important. Um, and so, uh, Aaron, as you were talking, I call my niece, who's six, so I have to show you how many she is on my fingers. She's six. I called her uh, Admiral Amelia, and we play this game where she is the, uh, she's a Martian Sentinel. She is an admiral in the Martian version of Space Force in the future. She's only six. And so, talking about physical fitness, are the requirements for women and girls the same as for men? Or is there a, are the recruiting requirements the same, both from the ASVAP, the good character, the physical fitness for men and women? 
And, uh, and George, let me start by saying I've seen uh, some of your posts about, uh, about the Admiral and, um, and I love it. I, I've, I've really enjoyed watching um, you uh, help cult cultivate that it, um, imagination and uh, the drive to, to, to truly reach for the stars and everyone should have that opportunity. And in that same light, every single applicant, every single applicant is treated exactly the same as everyone else. And the requirements for entry into the Space Force or, for, or to the Air Force for that matter, they don't vary. Uh, there, there will be some, some small differences for the, for the fitness standards, but the, they don't vary based on, on, a, on a protected classes. So when we talk about uh, race or, or gender or any of these things, every applicant is treated exactly the same. So the, so, so the bottom line here is if you have a desire to serve, if you're passionate, you're passionate about being a better human being and serving others and keeping our nation safe, then we want you on our team. That's awesome. I'll let Amelia know this. She's only six at the moment, but I'll put it on her 2030-ish uh, to do to do list to reconnect with you. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome.